Welcome to our first episode of In The Studio. And today we'll be exploring something I think you, you've all been looking forward to. We'll be investigating the small HD focus. Fact or fiction? Check, it, check us out after the bump. Hey, Thomas, do we have a bump? Are we gonna have a interstitial or? Uh, I, I, oh, hello. We will also be pairing this unboxing with a nice Hayes Orchard Original 100% Apple Cider. Now, I really recommend this apple cider as it has a nice earthy taste. And it goes well with small electronics and some vintage lenses from... Mm. I'd say the early 80s. Mm. Mm. Now, as we haven't unboxed this yet, I'm not sure how well it'll pair, but we'll see. Now, the first phase of our investigation will be that of the unboxing. This box was purchased from B&H Photo and Video. Let's give it a pull, shall we? Wow. I'm very happy B&H included a little extra uh, reading material here. I think this will be useful if I am stuck uh, on a train or in a line or with my wife. We're getting real right down to it here. We'll just pull that right off. It includes a barcode. And here, uh, here we can see the sticker that shows that we indeed got the Panasonic bundle. Wow. Oh, that's a nice little thing. Probably just pull this out, put this in a camera bag or whatever. I don't know, we got a little uh, propaganda here on the... Stuff. you get that? We've had some time to use the uh, the small HD focus so we're just gonna go through briefly how to assemble this thing. We're gonna we're gonna get deep into some ego not e e ergonomic. We have the the small HD focus bare except for these clips which I couldn't figure out how to remove. It took me long enough just to figure out how to put them on. If any of you know how to remove these clips Thanks. The first thing you'll notice is this hot shoe mount. There is a mount on both the bottom and the top. In case you want to mount it on a ball head or on a tripod stand or, or something. But it has these two insets here as well. And this will keep the monitor from, from slipping and, and rotating other than the way it was designed to rotate. So that's a nice little feature. And you'll notice they exist on the bottom and the top as well but you can't mount this that way. So maybe the plan is sometime down the road, they're planning on making extra accessories that could be used with this. I, I don't know, maybe they already do. Once this thing is uh, screwed in, you've got a real positive lock there. This rotates pretty well. I've got a top adjustment knob here. I've messed with it. It doesn't seem to help anything. So if you end up getting the snack pack version of this, it'll come with a, a, well, it won't come with that. It'll come with a few extras. It'll come with a battery, a camera battery adapter, a HDMI cord, and a USB cord. This USB cord, um, I guess you use for firm firmware updates and whatnot. Other than that, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's great, but we really didn't need to pay Can you for this. power it through the USB? Oh, gosh. I think if you want to power this through AC, 
or you, you would need it. a Sony L or Sony NPF dummy battery to um, AC power, which they don't include in the snack pack. So really what changes each snack pack from each other is the, the dummy battery they provide. So whether you get a Panasonic, Sony and whatnot, that's gonna change your dummy battery. They decided to use micro HDMI for this. I'm assuming to keep the size down. Micro HDMI, as we all know, is a pretty fragile port. So what they decided to do is kind of create a sort of HDMI lock, but it's a very cheap HDMI lock. Their solution is basically, we're just gonna create a port that is a certain sort of size and then we're gonna make all our HDMI cables that size so that essentially you can only put them in a very specific way and then they kind of lock in through friction and whatnot. Eh, it's something. Getting third-party cables um, could be an issue. However, we were able to find an HDMI, a third-party HDMI cable uh, that worked perfectly right out of the box. We've got all our components here. Let's see how it all works out. Here we've got a GH5. Um, obviously your camera may differ, um, but given that this seems to be designed to go on the hot shoe, the basic setup should be pretty similar for any DSLR style. Uh, camera. So we've left the most fiddly part of all, plugging in the HDMI for last, even plugging in their proprietary um, plugs is a bit fiddly. It's just one of the things you get with this monitor. It's a it's it's a five hundred dollar monitor. This is their solution for this issue, and take it or leave it, I guess. Plug this into our clip here. Great. So we're all set up here, and uh, you know, the aesthetic of the wires kind of going all over the place. You know. It may kind of give that mad scientist aesthetic that a lot of independent shooters uh, you know, really, really enjoy. Oh, like. There you go. Um, this pairs pretty well with the... Um, Apple cider. With the GH5. All in all, it's fairly ergonomic. You're going to make your rig uh, more top-heavy, so I'm, I have more strain on my wrist now than I normally have. But it's manageable. Something like the Atomos, uh, really tough to do, um, handheld. But this is manageable, I can do this. I could reduce the weight even further by adding a smaller battery here and removing the, the plug-in power to the camera and adding a, one of the Panasonic camera batteries back so we'd have more weight at the bottom, less weight at the top. That's really it as far as ergonomics, I mean. You can obviously set this up in many, many other ways as part of a rig. I'm not saying it's designed for rigless shooters, but it, it, since it comes with this bracket, it definitely has rigless shooters in mind. So look how it's quickly it breaks down. Wow, how, how quick, wow. Oh. Here we're, for the third part of this uh, investigation, I'll be inviting a guest, Pumper, in our third segment, Conclusions. Welcome, Pumper. Thank you. You like the small HD? Yeah, it's nice. Thank you. I don't know why they call it the small HD. The whole point of the thing is to have a screen that's bigger than, than the screen you already have on the camera. That's it? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. 
seems to be a lot of useful tools on the small HD focus. You've got a lot of framing aspects, safe zones, your uh, your grids. It's very you know. helpful for uh, getting focus. Um, I find it a lot easier to pull focus using it on the the GH5. Now, how do you, how do you pull focus on it? Because I think I look at it and just... I see if something's in focus, and if it's not, I, I adjust the. Uh... I don't really typically use the peaking tool, but I do use the focus assist tool. Um, Can you set custom crop marks within the? Oh yeah, aspect ratio. Yeah, yeah. there you go. So yeah. if you're if you're you know shooting to crop for like an anamorphic ratio or something like that, that's you can nice. change whether it's a mat or line. Right. So you can completely block it off, or you can just create the lines yeah. saying if you're kind of like uh, I may recompose later. Recompose. Yeah. So most of the tools that are there seem to have um, a level of customization to take them from. Oh, hey, that's a nice feature. But to hey, like you can really uh, customize that feature to what you need. I don't particularly screen. care for mm -hmm. the small HDs peaking mm -hmm. or focus assist tool. Mm -hmm. I don't find them particularly necessary. Right. So there's all these different tools, and you can have mm -hmm. presets for certain tools being on mm -hmm. in certain custom settings, and you can kind of have different spaces or groups of settings screens and you can just kind of flip between them so if you wanted to set up a certain grouping of tools for like shooting a green screen mm -hmm. you could have that all set up it's a really great tool for maybe two people who are sharing the same um, or even one person who's doing camera. several different types, types of, of things shooting yeah that was the nice thing about the small hd they did really seem to do a good job of implementing their full operating system onto this monitor. So the years of adding functionality, adding tools, adding these uh, abilities to customize your monitor to what you want it to do. The touch controls are pretty intuitive. You can um, zoom. You have pretty standard multi-touch tools. Yeah. yeah. Can be a bit fiddly. And that would actually be probably my biggest criticism. There have been several times where I kind of wished, man, I wish I had buttons or a little joystick or something. Honestly, really, if they just made the touchscreen um, as usable as even the cheapest Android phone out there, mm -hmm. it would be fine. So yeah, it's literally, not, they just need to make the touchscreen a little higher yeah. quality. But um, it's usable, and you'll get what yeah. you need to get done done. Yeah. As far as the, the backlight is concerned, it's pretty good. Is it viewable under daylight? That's tough to say, because what is daylight? I mean, if you're under direct sun, it's going to be hard to but see even the Even the Atomos fl flame or whatever. Oh, yeah, no. It, that, I wouldn't consider that easily daylight viewable. But yeah. at least and that, that was, that's like one of the yeah. brightest. Like, But that to came be... with a hood. Right. At the end of the day, that came with a hood, and this does not have a hood. And, that, and I do not see a way to easily add a hood. Well, I guess since you have the screw here, you could, probably, you could probably add a hood attachment. It's not like any worse than the flip out LCD. It can be brighter. There's two um, backlight sort of modes. Um, there's a OLED gamma match and uh, not. Has there been a situation yet where it's failed you? Like you've just really been like, oh gosh. A situation where it didn't fail me was uh -huh. I was shooting something against a white background, yeah. and I used false color. Yeah. Basically, I had this head with a product mm -hmm. on it, and it was spinning, and then mm -hmm. I had the white background behind it. If any yeah. element of that object I was shooting was uh -huh. too overexposed, yeah. um, or there was any bleed. So you were able um, to dial that in. It was very easily very to easy. see, like a hard line. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I haven't really had any points where you're like, oh, get issues this thing with off it of in here. particular. In a way, as much as we said about it, there's not that much to say because the specs on paper seem to be, yep, that's what it is. The screen gives you an image that's a lot closer to what you'll see mm -hmm. in the edit and therefore it's a lot easier to make decisions about, you know, yeah. what you're shooting. For me, it earns its size and weight. I wouldn't feel like I would need to go much bigger than that. Could a little extra size be helpful? Yes. I, I do feel um, 
comfortable with this. The screen itself is, I wouldn't call it a gloss, but it's not a matte either, uh, semi-reflective. What's the, the battery the life like? Have you done any the, tests? Even ergonomically, the cons to, to pro ratio is pretty, pretty good on this. What's the battery life? Um, yeah, I actually accidentally sort of, I accidentally tested it with the GH5 uh, and the battery running. that the, the kit comes with. I think it was over three hours that it was running. I wouldn't trust it for much more than three hours. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a far cry from that eight hours with the, the larger battery, the the nine the nine seventy from that ideal ideal situation that they like to put in their literature. But three hours is um pretty good, especially considering the GH five when you're actively shooting I don't know, maybe an hour and a half. It doesn't really last that long at least compared to the GH4. Mm, hour and a half is pretty conservative. Um, I think I outputted a lot to put in here. That's what we, we mostly use. We haven't really had the need to use other LUTs, but I... But you could have a couple. But I, I've used the process of it, so I feel confident with it. Yeah. This will not read um, SDXC cards. You have to use SDHD cards. I think if you had a small camera, a camera much smaller than this, I think the top heaviness could become more of an issue. You shouldn't be screwing around trying to, you know, be professional and trying to put a small HD on something that can't hold it. That's just silly. So you kind of rec you're recommending the uh, Blackmagic Ursa? the Alexa 65, I would say. If, if you're shooting on something like the GH5 and you feel like you're nailing everything uh, just on the basis of the EVF and the uh, LCD flip-out monitor, the small HD is probably not for you unless you just need one of the very specific tools. I think it really comes down to kind of maybe a, mo a monetary uh, cost at that point. Right. Uh, there are certainly a lot of cheaper monitors out there. And if you just want a monitor to just have a monitor, I think you'd be better served probably by the the ac acupuncture or whatever monitors because they're aperture. You might get more value there, but uh, as far as uh, the tools and then and the, the the ergonomics of the UI itself, that's where I would really say, hey, it it really stands out. I'd recommend it to most. DSLR shooters. And if you can't afford 500 bucks for a monitor, get out of the business. Gosh, you were going to lose subs for that comment. <laughs> oh, one last quirky thing. Um, you have to hold the power button down for two seconds to turn it off, but you merely tap or just press the power button to turn the small HD on. However, you have to wait then the better part of 10 seconds, like seven or eight seconds, for it to completely boot. I think we're done now. I've been drinking on driving while texting the speed and I swear that I ain't going home. You hold my phone and This will conclude the investigation. Uh, <laughs> Uh, links to the small HD uh, on our Philly account uh, in the description below. I hold the control, how does Coca Patron? I'm on Coca Patron, Tron, Coca Patron, Tron, Coca Patron. Good job.